So guys, apologies in advance for any plane noises. It's right around that time of day when all the planes are coming back in. There's this time in the morning when all the planes fly out and there's this time when they all fly in. So if you guys hear a lot of planes, I'm not necessarily gonna cut this because there's going to be quite a few. I've already had like three just when setting this up. I've already had three fly over me and so there's gonna be a lot. Anyways guys, that's just what you get for living in Alaska, especially in Fairbanks or any of the more rural places. They're highly powered by planes. So anyways guys, today I want to talk about my top six uh, favorite bushcraft belt knives. So the first one, and I know this one made an appearance on the neck knives, and that's just because I think it's a very versatile knife, both in neck knife carry and in belt knife carry, and that is the Mora Companion Slash Clipper. Now this one in particular is a clipper. Uh, as you guys can probably tell by the color of this handle, it's not like any of the companions. And I personally like the clipper more uh, than any of the companions. Not to say the companion's bad, it's the same exact knife. I just like the handle ergos on this one more. So that's what I personally like uh, about this one. And this is the first one because overall it's such a great value. Uh, and it's such a great performing knife for its price point. Um, it's overall just had to be on this list just for the number of reasons I'm sure you're all familiar of what makes this knife such a great knife. Once again, more planes in the background. <laughs> I just love this. Uh, so anyways, the next knife, and I kind of want to show off its new sheath that I made for it and kind of get you guys like a little teaser of what's to come with the Mora Garberg. This of course is the Mora Garberg and I did make this sheath for it. I made it for a custom reason I will be going into in another video but this is the Mora Garberg and this knife of course you guys could probably already see coming because if you've noticed or been around my channel for the past few months this knife has been in so many videos I started a series pitting other knives because this knife is just so excellent. So this knife is one of my absolute favorites. And once again, just had to make a Kydex sheath for it. Uh, this is my own, like I said, uh, so I could make one specific video for it. But I also wanted to test out the Kydex sheath. I think personally it turned out really well. This is in red. Number two on this list, just for the fact that it's so inexpensive and in comparison to what you get, and it's such a value option for all the amazing performance you get out of it. So that's the Mora Garberg. So the next one, and one that you could probably already see coming, because any knife that I pit up against the Mora Garberg is gonna be on this list, because it's a very good knife, even in itself. And it is, this one is the Topps Fieldcraft. And I've had this one, this is actually the oldest one, at least in my personal collection, this is the oldest of all of them, or all of the belt knives, and it is the Topps Fieldcraft. Really love it. It has been such an awesome and amazing uh, Fieldcraft belt knife. For the occasions that I did want a belt knife, this belt knife uh, worked very well. It's very tough, very durable. 1095 is probably where I, the, the few things I dislike about it is just the fact that the 1095 can rust up very easy, and the worst thing about it is just the fact that it doesn't have a sharpened spine and it's coated. So while that prevents rust to the rest of the knife, uh, you cannot strike ferro rods with this other than using this hateful shango notch, which no one likes. They're terrible. Don't ever use shango notches ever. But <laughs> anyways, on a more serious note, very awesome knife. Though, like I said, the reason why this one has to come in third as opposed to the Mora Garberg is the Mora Garberg is still like $50 cheaper than this knife. So still, the Mora Garberg beats it in that awesome and amazing price point that it comes in at. And overall, really do. So now onto a knife that I really do like. I just often throw it in my backpack so that whenever I'm out I can test it. Then I forget that it's in there and don't test it and don't use it. But it is the Trade SHF 42D. This is a very awesome knife and much like the Topps Fieldcraft, it has the same exact size as it and it uses the same steel 1095. Uh, but overall it has a few different improvements what I would think and that is that it has a better blade to handle ratio where the blade is longer than the handle. 
uh, and it is a full flat grind, which certainly brings some differential. I'm not really sure that the full flat grind is better, but it certainly does make it interesting. Another thing I do like about it, though, is that it does actually have a straight 90 degree spine. So this knife, you can actually throw very good sparks off of, and I have tested it. Another thing I kind of like, and it's a side note, not necessarily something that I hate about the top. Field crafts jimping can sometimes be a little bit sharp and painful to use, whereas this shrade uh, is very flat, and it's you can definitely use it if you would like to, but you don't have to use it, and it won't dig into your skin obnoxiously. Uh, so that is definitely number four on the list, and once again, it is also cheaper than the Topps Fieldcraft. It's right around the same price, just slightly more expensive, I think, than the Topps, or not the Topps, but the uh, Mora Garberg. So really awesome. I'd say the only thing I kind of dislike, and it's just because I'm not a personal fan of this type of sheath, is this leather sheath. Uh, and once again, I'm just not a particular fan of this type of sheath. Uh, and I do like some leather sheaths, but I'm very picky about the types that I do like. Uh, most of them, as you guys can see here, are Kydex sheaths. If you notice that trend, I really like Kydex sheaths. So the next one, and the reason why I had to put this one so low on the list, is due to primarily just its expense. And this is the most expensive knife. It's more than double the least uh, the next most expensive knife. Sorry, that's a little bit of a tricky statement to say, but this is double the cost of the next most expensive knife on this list. And that's primarily why it is so low on this list. It's actually probably personally of the knives I own for belt knives, my favorite. And the reasons are that one, it's a very, very thick spined knife. Secondly, uh, though what they've done with this very thick spine is that they've made it, uh, since they did a full flat grind, they really were able to knock all that meat off the edge and drive it down to a very, very sharp and very thin edge. I really do like that. Uh, so you get toughness, but you also get supreme sharpness. I also really dig the uh, nylock steel, which is the European version of D2, and it holds a really great edge, though it isn't as uh, rust resistant, but this is a polished uh, edge on here, so I have found that this knife is actually pretty rust resistant. Uh, other than that, of course, like all pull force knives, I don't know if I just mentioned this, but this is the pull force prepper one. Sorry if I forgot to mention that, but like all pull, pull force knives, the ergonomics are very good on this knife, and I really love how they feel at hand. And lastly, the last thing I really like about this knife is the fact that you can put a survival kit in the middle of it. Uh, and I really do appreciate that. Once again, also running in a Kydex sheath, no surprises there. Um, the only thing I really dislike about this knife, and I mentioned this in the first video about the Prepper one, is the fact that the spine is rounded as opposed to being a flat 90 degrees. And so that means that you cannot really strike a ferro rod off the back of it, which kind of sucks, but ultimately still a very great knife. So the next and last knife in this list, and the reason why this one is last is just for the fact that I've really only recently got this knife, so I don't have a whole lot of use on it, especially since it's been cold, still is cold, but I have not been using this knife a whole lot just for the fact that it's winter and it's cold, and so I've not really got a good opportunity to go out and use it. But I have been using it a little bit around the house, doing some crafting around here, and uh, opening some packages and stuff like that uh, and this is the Allegheny M38 Bushcraft. This is a very awesome knife uh, and what really impressed me immediately off the bat is while it is small, this is the second smallest knife in this list, smaller or the it's slightly larger than the Mora Clipper Companion uh, but it is pretty small, but the ergonomics are very squared away. I especially love this choil. I'm generally not a big fan or not necessarily choil, but this piece here, the finger. Yeah, I think it is a choil, but uh, I'm not generally a fan of knives that have these. If you notice, things like the Mora Garberg really don't have them, but on this knife, it's very well executed and very well rounded, and overall, in the hand, it just feels really right. Like, it feels good holding it like that. 
So this is made out of A2 tool steel, so arguably probably the second best steel on here, depending on how you like D2 slash Nylocks, but very awesome steel, very awesome knife, and once again, coming in at $150, it's pretty reasonable, especially for the fact that these are custom made, so really awesome, but... Once again, uh, this one I will be using more heavily and I'll roll in annotations if I end up, you know, finding any weaknesses on this knife or any of these knives. I'll definitely be rolling it into the annotations and letting you guys know about uh, any problems I have with these throughout more extensive testing uh, that I'll be planning to do in the spring and summer. But anyways, guys, that is the top six knives, uh, belt knives of Bushcraft for me. And like I said, that's just my personal selection. Once again, I'm primarily a knife or neck knife user, so I do not have a gigantic selection of uh, belt knives. But these have been the few that have stuck around. A lot of them, just like the, uh, what was it, Bark River Knives Aurora, you know, get kind of quickly thrown to the side if they aren't good enough for me. I'm very picky about belt knives because I just really don't use them that much uh, and now i am actually starting to get into them a little bit more but anyways guys that's it for now and don't forget to comment like share subscribe and i'm out